Hey guys, Maxman RC. I don't know if y'all remember, but I hope you guys remember the rip song. It's been a few weeks. This thing's still going strong. Absolutely no problems at all whatsoever. Today, we're gonna waterproof it. And this is how we're gonna do it. Conformal. Uh, conformal coating. They're, they sell it in sprays as well. But right now we're gonna do it a coating. And uh, we're gonna get to it. So uh, let's just jump right in. All right, so I already went ahead and I already removed the bolts. I wasn't gonna be messing around with this with, with you guys because I mean, let's face it, it's just six bolts. Not a big deal. Those guys I removed, so let's go ahead and pop this guy open. All right, we come to our first little cable. There you are, you see? You can also see the computer in there. So we'll just go ahead and uh, let me set you guys down real quickly here so you guys can see a little bit better. All right, let's go on ahead and remove this guy. It is just a little bit of tape, that's not a big deal. All right. We gotta be very gentle with these connectors because they are very, very thin connectors. We don't wanna pop out the cables or break the connector itself. On the plus side, I like this because I mean, you can actually see that they're actually well put in. So I'm not too mad about this thing being too difficult. Let me pause it and once I'm off, I'll come back. All right, so we got all of them off. This guy goes to the power switch. This one goes to the roof light. Uh, this is an extra one. I do believe some of these actually come with tail lights. So this one I'm guessing goes to the tail lights as well. Overall, we went ahead. It does run on 2.4 as we all know. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this guy out. See if it gives us any issues. This is actually the battery connector. Let's see now. And there it is. Okay, so that's a battery. It's a plug-in. Um, I did keep the original uh, mini, I believe, what are these, Tamiya? Whatever they are, I completely forgot. And instead, I just got an adapter. I was actually able to build an adapter myself, I should say. So we went ahead and took care of that. I'm going to take off this guy. This is actually our ESC slash receiver two-in-one uh, this is actually what we're gonna be hitting with the conformal uh, coating this right here we have the motors the motor setup it looks like we do have one single there is two motors that's for sure all right there's two motors in here and uh, we'll pop this guy open and we'll see how this goes uh, once I pop it open I'll bring you guys back all right the, the screws are off and now if you ever work with computers you got. You need to remember not to uh, to discharge yourself out of any kind of electric uh, chargers you might have. You know, kind of like when you go fill up a, uh, your gas tank, you need to discharge yourself so that you won't accidentally shock the board. If you shock this board, it's all done. It's game over. The board is it's done. So yeah. So let's go ahead. This is the board we're gonna be hitting with Confirmal. Uh, the bottom says Lansu. SNT 2.4 gigs as you guys can see right there. Let me see if I can focus it up for you. There you go I'm gonna put this guy to the side for now. I'm gonna pop the I'm gonna pop the motor open and uh, We'll show you guys exactly what's in here and how that motor works All right, so we got two screws Three we don't want to lose them we want to be careful with these things because, I mean, these, let's face it, this is basically a toy grade. So, you just want to be careful not to strip anything out or break anything as you're pulling stuff off. And there it is. So, here we have our first motor. 
it is grease. There is a decent amount of grease in there, which I'm actually impressed. It looks like, honestly, I'm sorry, Arma, but it looks like it actually has more grease in there than most Arma uh, transmissions come with to begin with. So, yeah, I mean, it is nicely greased up. It does look like we have the, the first motor here. The second motor looks like we would have actually take have to take this guy off. I'm not going to bother with all of that. I don't really need to waterproof the motors because they're brushed. So whatever happens, happens. If these motors go out, now that I know how this guy is set up, I can easily replace these guys if they get burned out. So I'm not too concerned. Uh, and I really don't feel like taking out the transmission either. Uh, I... There's really, honestly, there's no point in that because that's not what we're focusing on here. Just wanted to show you guys how the motors work. Everything is plastic gearing, so it's really not that bad. Now, me being me, I am actually going to go on ahead. And add just a dab more of grease. Just because it's me. Not needed, honestly. Because this thing screws decently enough. But, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I'd rather have it greased up nicely. It should be fine. Really isn't that bad. So, we're just going to head and we'll put the motor cover back on. Run the cable through. Again, the greasing part, if you want to do it, that's fine. But this guy... Honestly, it has more than enough grease in it. It had more than enough grease. I just added just another plop of one. Okay. Two. You hear that click in because I don't want to over tighten it and then strip out the plastic. So I basically just, uh, I, I, I just be a little bit more careful and I don't put a lot of pressure onto the driver as I'm, put, as I'm doing this. That's nice and tight there. So we got this taken care of. Uh, let's move over and let's go on over to um, to in the conformal coating on the board. Let's go. All right. So we are back. We do have the conformal coating. This one's made by MG Chemicals. 419D. It's actually one of the ones that I found to be the best, to be honest. Ooh, smells like acetone, nail polish remover. So the way we're, we're going to want to do this, we're going to want to coat every little piece of this guy, but we don't want to hit these parts. We do not want to hit any of the connectors. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to make this thing run again. Uh, we're going to hit the back as well. We're going to give it a quick few brushings, after which we're going to wait about five minutes, I believe. I, it hasn't done, I haven't done this in a while, I'm sorry. We're going to wait about five minutes after we're due it, after it's done, so it'll dry, and then we can put everything back together. All right, we're done with the conformal coating on this side of the board. We're gonna wait a few minutes to let it dry out a little bit, and then we're gonna go on ahead, flip it over, and do the back of it. All right, so uh, I, I waited and I double checked, and it looks pretty decent right now. So it was probably about a two minute wait. You can actually see how glossy this guy is now. That's exactly what you wanna see. I'm gonna go flip it over. Now this one might be a little bit more uh, 
tiny little bit more uh, problematic or, or some or um yeah a little more problematic because we can't let it run all over the place so uh just stick around and watch let's go Now, keep in mind that everybody will have different ways of doing this. This is just the way I did it. If you'd rather wait 5 minutes, 10 minutes between coats, just going one straight motion, that's completely up to you. Uh, I have used to I used to build computers back in the day, so this is the way I've always done it. I've always just gone boom, boom, one side, up and down. Wait about a minute or two for it to dry out, or at least, yeah, dry out. And then uh, hit it once more. Right now I'm going to let this thing chill for about another minute or so. And after which, we're going to go ahead, flip it over, one more code on the other side. Wait another two, three minutes, flip it over, one more code here, and boom, we're going to put everything back into the ripsaw. Unfortunately, um, when I was taking it apart, I think I might have actually screwed up one of the cables, as you can see. And I just sent a couple screws flying. Don't do that. Okay, here we go. I kind of... Where's my camera? Where's my camera? kind of chewed up this cable a little bit. So we're going to see if it still works fine as it should. I'm going to let it be. If not, then I'm just going to replace this whole connector and cable. So that's not a big deal. Uh, over here in the back, you can actually see... Uh, let me turn on the light. There you go. You can actually see how there's a little port, a little door over here and if we go on the other side you can see how there's a little porthole for a lack of a better term some of these ripsaw tanks they actually come with uh smokers in the back so basically these guys these two guys right here will actually blow out quote unquote smoke you would just put water through here it'll have a little heating element or vibration element or something along those lines inside and the smoke would just come out through the through the two exhaust ports in the back. It's pretty nifty. Personally, though, I feel like that's just more stuff to go wrong with it. So I decided not to go with the ones with the smoke. I have been told that they make those, and I thought, and I and they're pretty decent. They're pretty nice, but honestly, they're really not for me. Uh, now going back to this guy right here. can actually see how it's getting shiny. Same thing with the other side. You can see how nice and shiny it is now. That's exactly what you want to see. Exactly. To the letter. That's what you want to see. Now, we're going to be very gentle right now. Now, remember, conformal spray does have some sort of acetone. Or it does have some ha heavy chemicals. So you want to do this in a well ventilated area and be careful what you use. I'm using uh, cellophane or uh, foam plates. Needless to say, this thing will eat right through the plate without any, without any consideration. So make sure you use something that you don't care that it will get damaged. I'm just going to do one more pass over this guy right here.
Now we'll just wait a few minutes for it to actually dry out a little bit and then we can actually start putting it back into the car. And we're back. So we're gonna go on ahead and we're gonna put the board back in here. Might be a little messy, but that's okay. All right, so let's go on ahead and we'll grab the board. All right, I went ahead and did the cable, ran the cable through out of camera because I didn't want to unbother y'all. So let's go on ahead. We'll pull the cable taut from the bottom. Okay. Cable's making it a little difficult, but that's okay. So we're gonna go on ahead and we're gonna put the motor screws, I mean, I'm sorry, not the motor screws. The, the board screws back on. Of course, like everything, there's always difficulties. But that's okay. That's why we're here. To learn. Now like I've said. I used to build computers. And this was actually one of my biggest pet beefs. When I was building them. Was putting stuff back on. Because it always. Always. Gave you issues. But see the board's going back in. They're not a board. It's completely waterproof. So now I can actually support. Submerge this guy if I really want to. Y'all didn't see that. Give me a sec. Okay, so I retrieved the screw. <laughs> my apologies. My mistake. Let's not do that again. Okay, I won't sing anymore. I promise. Okay. There you go. Pull the cab battery cable down. Tighten it up. Not too tight though. Trust me, you don't want to over tighten these things. You over tighten and that's it. Everything is done. The plastic gets so screwy. And the only way to do it afterwards, what I found if you do happen to over tight up a screw to a piece of plastic like this, is uh, fill the plastic with hot glue and go through that. There you go, the board's nice and secured now, as it should be. And now, the board is fully waterproof. So now I could, in theory, go on ahead and submerge this. Not gonna do it, unless I actually, you know, it accidentally happens. But, I could do it now, because the board would not get damaged at all, and it would just keep them pushing along however if you guys do remember we did not hit these these little fellas right here one two three four five the center one got a little bit i'm not too concerned about it because we don't use that one but the ones that we do use we didn't touch them we didn't put any conformal coating in there due to the fact that we do not we do not want those guys covered because i do need these guys to actually Still be able to transfer electricity back and forth and information and blah, blah, blah. So, I guess I take back what I've said. I wouldn't fully submerge this, but now it's okay to drive it through a little bit of a water puddle without worrying about it getting damaged. Now we're going to go on ahead and we're going to reconnect the power switch, which is this guy right here. Okay. We're uh, gonna do motor number. We're gonna do the bottom motor. We're gonna do the top motor. Bring it to the back. Okay. 
and plug it in. And like always, like I've always said, radio turns on first, then the actual vehicle. There we go. Let me bring you guys up a little bit. Forward. Reverse. Left. Right. Everything's working as it should work. So we're in good shape. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Now let me shut off the light on, on here. You can see it actually also has a blue light itself. I think it would be nice to be able to see if I can get this to shine out the body one way or another. And I think the best bet for me to be able to do that. We put the body back on here. And I'm still missing the rear bumper. I'm going to put it on in a second. Seeing where that light is coming from. We should be somewhere around, the, around this area right here. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do is actually I'm going to drill a quick hole. Right through the center right here. Just so that we can see that light. Why? Is it necessary? No. Am I going to do it anyway? Yes. Why? Because it's going to be all the way in the top and it's not going to damage anything. I got to remember the light bar is up here. So I'm either going to do it here or I'm going to do it. More than likely I'm going to push it right here. So give me a second. Let's see how that looks. Oh, yes. See, now we can actually see the light shine through a little bit better. Just give it a little bit more of an ambiance. So now let me put the bumper back in. Which, by the way, if you want, you can always put lights on the bumper. Save you a couple bucks. If you, instead of buying them, um, instead of buying the, the tank with the lights built in. That's always a possibility. All right, so since I'm gonna do some electrical connections now, let's shut off the car. Undo the battery. You always wanna be safe, especially with LiPo batteries. Okay. <laughs> now we're gonna plug in the beat up cable. Hopefully it works. All right, plug the cable back in. Let's put the battery, body, I'm sorry, battery, the body back on. Have the battery on it. Radio's on. So let's go ahead and power it up and see if the lights work. If not, then 
Uh, we'll have a little bit more work to do. There you go. Yep, lights are working. So we are actually in really good shape right here. That's perfect. It actually, everything is working as it should. Once again. Forward, backward, left, and right. So that's it. And that's it. The car is ready. All I got to do is just put the bolts back in for the body to maintain it closed. I'm not going to bore you with you with, I'm not going to bore you guys with that. I'm just going to do it myself off camera. Uh, for now, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, you can use conformal spray. Uh, well, I say spray a lot because it actually, it does come in an aerosol as well, but you can use uh conformal coating spray, whatever in close to any electronic, just double check before you do. And it'll actually make it water resistant, just like I did with that circuit board right there. Uh, I might actually also hit up a couple of receivers if you guys want to check that. I know I'm going to hit up the receiver for my, excuse me, for my Red Cat uh, Everest. Because I think it sits way too low and it's just, I'm just going to hit it with conformal just to be safe. Uh, same thing um, with the big guy with the... HBS Basilisk. The receiver is also out and about. There's really, it's really not waterproof. Basically, I think I'm gonna do it with all the crawlers, including uh, which actually the last crawler I can think of would actually be the the Gen 8 V2. Uh, and if you count the Rock Bouncer, but the Rock Bouncer's receiver is actually in a pretty decently watertight box. So, yeah, that's it. That's how you go on ahead and waterproof. I wouldn't call waterproof. I would say water resistant. I gotta get myself out of that mind frame. That's how you make the receivers water resistant so that you don't have to worry about them going out in the snow, going out in the water. All you gotta worry about is, hey, I'm gonna make this work and if it gets wet, I'm not too concerned about it. This, the rip saw is actually a really fun tank. Y'all have seen my, uh, I hope you've seen my unboxing my running of this guy. It's actually pretty decent for the price range. Under $100, just bare ripsaw. And I think it's around $120 to $170, depending on uh, if you want the ripsaw that has the smoke coming out from the stacks. It's the one that has the lights on the, fr on the back, on the front, and on the top. Those things are usually around $170 to me personally. Just seems like more things that'll go wrong on a toy grade RC. So, as you can see, actually, the little blue light now gives a little bit more, you know, a little more of a look. Yes, I know now that's going to make it, you know, especially in the snow, it's going to go snow, it's going to go in there. But that's exactly why we did what we did with that, with that, uh, uh, with that board. We actually made it water resistant. So that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to go on ahead, finish uh, finish the rips up real quickly. Just going to bolt everything together. And from there on out, I hope you guys have a good night. And if you like this, I'm going to post the link up at the bottom. Check out uh, my coffee. If you want to buy me a coffee, I'd highly appreciate that. It's going to help me keep on making these kind, this kind of content. You don't have to by no means. Uh, you do not have to, but it would be highly appreciated. Uh, also... Come summer, I'm gonna start going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing giveaways, and honestly, the coffee donations will actually help with that as well. Um, and finally, if you guys remember what I said about the conformal that use something that you don't care about damaging, this is how strong it is. That right there is what the conformal will do to just regular. Uh, cellophane, foam plates, whatever you want to call these things. It'll just eat through right through it. So be careful what you use it. That's actually why the conformal comes in a glass bottle. So yeah, a little friendly warning. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a good night. And um, stay safe.